This here is a papaya. Nothing too crazy there. That's why I'm not talking about papaya today. I'm talking about something that is related to papayas, but is really, really cool. The babaco. This smells amazing. It is stinking up my room right now with good things. This is an Ecuadorian fruit that's actually a hybrid between two relatives of papaya, but not papaya itself. One of those relatives I've had, that is the uh, mountain papaya, which I found that one in Colombia. The other one is the toronche. So if you take the toronche and the mountain papaya and you hybridize them together, you get this baby right here. This was sent to me by Nate over at wildlandsplants.com. This is a farm and a nursery, so if you're somebody who grows plants uh, or lives in the California area and wants to check it out, uh, check out this website right here. And Nate, thank you. So if you watch a lot of cartoons like I do, then there's one thing that you probably know about papayas is that they are juicy and full of papain. They make you strong like Popeye. Popeye, papain. Popeye, papain. Eh, forget it. It's true that papayas have something in it called papain. And what else is true is that the babaco has three times as much papain as the papaya. That's pretty cool, but what does it mean? Um, papain, I don't believe, has anything in it that makes you strong like Popeye, but it does do some pretty cool things. Uh, one thing is that papain is used as a meat tenderizer. It is used as a teeth whitener, and I might get in trouble for saying this, but papain is sometimes used by people to cheat on their drug test. If you eat a lot of papain, it's going to mess with your urinalysis, so sometimes you'll get a false negative. Now, you didn't hear that from me, and I also should point out that papain, for some people, can cause problems. Uh, papain, because it is a meat tenderizer, it's similar to, like, uh, pineapples and stuff like that, where it can cause a burning sensation. And if you're somebody that is sensitive to papain, you can get a severe reaction to it. So, be careful out there, guys, okay? Uh, that's all for educational purposes. <laughs> I'm standing on the site of Woodstock, the famous location where in 1969, over 450,000 people gathered to watch such incredible acts as the Grateful Dead, Jefferson Airplane, The Who, and Jimi Hendrix. That all happened right here. Why am I here? to tell you about Ren. I'm not talking about a certain cartoon chihuahua from the 90s, guys. Ren is a website that is designed to help you help the environment. Every day we do things that are harmful to the environment, uh, driving a car, buying too much stuff, using too much electricity, it adds up. Their online calculator will estimate just how big your carbon footprint is and then give you options to help you fun projects that will help offset that footprint. I'm talking projects like regrowing trees, saving the rainforest, stuff like that. And Ren will even send you updates to show you just where your money is going. I tried it myself and it was really easy and it only took a few minutes to do. So if you want to help the environment and you're not sure exactly where to go, just go to Ren.co, that is W-R-E-N dot C-O, to find out more. In the description below, there is a referral link, and if you click that referral link, Ren will help protect 10 extra acres of rainforest. That's a lot, guys, so click that link and uh, check it out, and thank you so much, Ren, for sponsoring this video. So, the way you cut open a babaco is kind of like a papaya. Uh, you trim off the end and the point, and you put it on its side, and you cut it down the center just like that. Now one thing you may notice is that the babaco is basically seedless. There's a couple little seeds here and there, but um, it's not like a papaya where you cut it open, it's just like chock full of seeds. Before I lose any more juice, I'm gonna kind of like funnel it into this bowl here. I've seen a few videos online of people 
attempting to eat babaco but not really knowing how to do it. Uh, most of the information I got was from watching Ecuadorian videos and looking at Ecuadorian sites. And the most common preparation in Ecuador, at least from my searching for recipes, is something called uh, dulce de babaco, which I'm sure I'm butchering. So like a candied babaco, you take chunks of this and you cook it in a sugar syrup. Uh, I'm not going to do that just because I want to get a taste of mostly of like what the flesh of this is like. So the first thing I'm going to do is just scrape out some of this snot that's on the inside and the seeds. Although that is edible, it is not the most ideal part. So here's a bowl full of babaco, juice, seeds, and snot. Uh, I will try that delicious stew in a moment, but I want to deal with the, uh, the flesh here first. So next I'm going to skin this, and this is not something you need to do. You can eat the skin, but I've heard some people say that they don't like the skin. So I'm guessing it is similar to papayas, because papayas you can also eat the skin, but you may not want to. Huh. This is going to be a tricky one. Uh, I can tell you right now, there, there's a lot of flavor in this. Let's break it down. Um, it's tart. It's more tart than a papaya. It's also um, sweet, but not very sweet. It's less sweet than a papaya. I think this would actually be better if you put sugar on it, and that's often what people do. Is they'll sprinkle some sugar on top. Uh, the texture on it is kind of amazing. It's really, really juicy. Look what happens when I just kind of squeeze it a little bit. That's how juicy it is. It's actually like dripping with just a little bit of pressure from my fingers. It's dripping from the bottom. Now, when I was reading online of people's experience with this, everyone had a different explanation of what this tasted like. I've heard cherimoya. Uh, another guy said it tastes like pineapple and papaya combined. One person said it tastes like creepy crawlers. So maybe it depends on whatever nostalgia you're pulling out. I think depending on who you are, this is going to taste different to you. For me, I can get, I can understand those flavors, but it's not the main one I'm getting. The main flavor I'm getting is fajoa. Fajoa is a guava relative that is sometimes called pineapple guava because it's got kind of a guava and pineapple sort of flavor. Another flavor that I'm getting is kind of like soursop, tart, anona sort of sort of taste, but a lot of different little tropical flavors in there. It does taste like a papaya, but not the entire papaya, if you know what I mean. It's got like certain chemical compounds that are inside this, and I think the main flavor that you get from a papaya is lacking in this one. So that's the flesh. Let's try some of uh, the broth. The juice is fine, but it's missing some of the, the bite of the flesh. The flesh has more sourness. This doesn't. It kind of reminds me of like, you know, coconut water. And yes, yes, I will try some of the snot. Mmm. -mm. It's pretty gross. Not wild about the texture of that snot, but the flavor is more like the water than the flesh. You can eat the slime if you want, but I can see why a lot of the recipes I was looking at uh, tell you to remove it. And finally, let's try the skin. Some recipes tell you to remove the skin, some say to leave it on. Let's see if the skin has a different flavor when I just eat it all on its own. It's maybe a little soapy tasting. So I would say that if you're using this in a juice, you probably wouldn't notice. But if you're eating like actual slices of it, including the skin, just raw, you might want to take the skin off. So I have a little bit of criticism for this fruit, and that is the flavors are good, 
but it feels like there needs to be something to bring them together. And I feel that way about the papaya as well. With the papaya, usually when I eat a papaya, I put a little bit of lime juice on it, and it makes it so much better. Uh, with this, I wouldn't put lime juice on it, but I would add something to it. I'd say either like another sweeter fruit to it, like some berries, or some coconut maybe, or if you want to really highlight just the babaco flavor, just some sugar. And a lot of the recipes for using this, uh, even like some of the more traditional Ecuadorian recipes, have you put uh, sugar and spices in with it. good, but it's it's falling a little flat. It needs something in there, and I think what would help is a spoonful of sugar to help the babaco go down. That's the way to do it. Just a little bit of sugar, and it really brings out a really nice flavor in there. I'm getting a little bit more of like the strawberry sort of note. Uh, definitely still feeling the fajoa. Definitely still feeling the sour sop, uh, the pineapple sort of flavor, getting that. Mm-hmm. Makes a world of difference to add a little sugar to that. You know what? I have an idea. I think it's a good idea. You know how earlier I said that the problem that I have with the babaco is similar to the problem that I have with the regular papaya? And why I put lime juice on a papaya? and why I would put sugar on this. I think the problem that these two have, like the element that's missing, is in the other fruit. So if you're to bring them together, that might solve it. Maybe like no sugar, no lime juice, but if you were to combine babaco with papaya, maybe magic will happen. Let's try it. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> it, it's still missing something. Uh, I think putting papaya and babaco together um, didn't help it. It didn't help it. The sugar in the babaco fixes it. The lime juice in the papaya fixes it. But putting those two flavors together, it still is missing something. So I'd say even like this, it needs some sugar or another sort of fruit or something to bring it together. So uh, yeah, I was wrong. Well, anyway, I think that's about it for the babaco. Uh, thanks once again to Nate for sending me this incredible fruit. Uh, and again, anyone uh, watching who grows plants or wants to learn more, of what Nate is doing, uh, check out wildlandsplants.com, and uh, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. I would like to give a shout out to Smarter Every Day, AltPod, and the Harbor Leaf Tea Company. They are mega patrons over on patreon.com. If you haven't heard of it, patreon.com is it's how this channel happens. It's how I can afford to keep this YouTube channel going. So if you haven't checked it out, please take a moment to go into the description below and click the link there. Uh, I also have t-shirts for sale over at my web store. A link to that is in the description as well. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.